Stayallday.com. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all that, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And we put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one book, one show, one daily master class. Yes, you heard me, daily master class. And all of this is all under one umbrella. We got a hardcover book too, in case you didn't know. All this under one umbrella called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how to strengthen your ego, how to uh, solidify, how to, uh, there's another word I'm looking for there is, is escaping me, but we'll come back to it. How to strengthen your ego, we'll just stick to that. Definition of ego, because we talked about ego in many episodes in the past, I'll refer those to you in a minute. Actually, before I even give you the definition, let me remind you that I have a text line where I want you to text me and tell me the most valuable insight that you got from today's episode, or if you have a question, challenge, or pushback on anything that I offer here today, I want you to text me and tell me about that too. My number is 305-384-6894. Once again, 305-384-6894. Now, definition of ego is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. Now, I'm talking about ego. I have talked about ego in a few episodes of this show. Episode 1523, I told you to check your ego at the door. Episode 1353, sister episode, prioritizing success over ego. Episode 951, how to earn your ego. Episode 632, do you need your e when do you need your ego? The answer is all the time. And episode 286, is your ego out of control? And episode 271, leaders cannot have fragile egos. Now, being that I've talked about ego all those times in the past, this is a different angle. Today, I'm gonna to tell you how to strengthen your ego in a way that will center you and to calm you down actually, especially for those of you who tend to maybe pop off in a reckless way, in an angry way. We just talked about anger a couple days ago in episode 1798. Whenever you feel like your, your ego is, has been impugned upon by someone or something else and you tend to get angry when that happens and you tend to uh, just maybe lose a little bit of your self-control when that happens. Today, I'm going to tell you how to strengthen, how to solve that issue by strengthening your ego. Now, you may be listening to me. If you never thought about it from this angle, you may be listening to me thinking, wait a minute, Dre, wouldn't strengthening my ego actually make me get more angry when something like that happens? On the contrary, no, it will not. Strengthening your ego will actually cut down on your reaction impulse, how you can stop being impulsive and reacting when things happen and you can actually learn to respond. You'll be more centered and more calm. This is something that I also talked about. I'll refer you to another episode, episode 902, how to control your reaction impulse in life. So make sure you check all those episodes. All of them are listed down below in the show notes. And also you can text me, like I told you, tell me the best thing you get from today's episode. Let's get into our points. Point number one, the topic once again today is how to strengthen your ego. Number one, Accept that you can be wrong, accept that you can lose, accept that others may be better than you in certain ways, shapes, and forms. This is the first way to strengthen your ego. Now again, some of you are listening to this and nodding your head because you understand it, but some of you are listening to this and saying, wait a minute, Dre, wouldn't that weaken my ego? Doesn't that take me in the opposite direction? No, no, no. This actually strengthens your ego, and I'll explain to you why. Humility, the humility that you can accept that you're not always right, the humility to accept that somebody might just beat you sometimes, doesn't mean you're going to lose all the time, but that somebody could beat you, and the humility to accept that other people might be better than you, smarter than you, more informed than you, more connected than you, have more friends than you, be more liked than you, just the humility to accept that you are not all perfect and all great all the time. Humility is actually a key aspect of a strong ego. Now, I told you in episode number 445 about humility, how to use it and what to watch out for. I also told you in episode 1415 how to have the competence of a teacher, but the humility of a student. In episode 1307, having the humility to earn your confidence. 
Now let me explain to you a little bit more about what this means, how humility actually makes your ego stronger. First of all, let's look at the opposite, opposite end of the spectrum. Weak ego individuals. You know what happens to people with weak egos? Do any of you ever know anyone who fits, who is, who has a weak ego? I'll give you a description of them and you tell me if I'm right. And if I'm not right, then their, their ego is not that weak. Weak, indivi weak ego individuals fall apart when anything or anyone shows or threatens to show that they, the weak ego individual, isn't the best or that they may have some weaknesses relative to other people. So people who are ego weak, they can't stand not looking like they know everything, not being the best at everything, not being recognized as the king or the queen in the room, not being the center of attention, not being the center of gravity around everything. People who have weak egos, they chafe at anything that, or anyone that takes the attention away from them when their egos are weak. When your ego is strong, you have the humility to accept that, hey, maybe right now somebody else is gonna be in the spotlight. Right now, somebody else is the headliner. Right now, all the attention is going to this thing or this cause or this person. And you're all right with that because you are strong enough in what you do. You have the humility to know, look, all right, everything's not all, everything doesn't always have to be about me. When you have a strong ego, you're all right with that. And you can accept that. That actually makes your ego stronger. So when someone else gets the attention, because I don't care who you are and how great you are, Nobody is going to stay on top or be the center of attention at what they do forever. Everybody, the power is a power is a game, all right. And the pendulum of power is always swinging back and forth. Any of you ever had one of those pendulums that's just going back and forth forever and never stops? That's the way power goes. That's the way attention goes. That's the way energy goes. So you're not always going to be the person who's getting all the attention. A strong ego individual is all right with the fact that sometimes the attention is on you and sometimes it's not. A weak egoed individual loves when all the attention is on them, but as soon as the attention is off them, they have to do something to try to get that attention back or they become destructive because the attention is not on them. So having the humility to do the work that makes you stronger and makes you better makes you all right with the fact that someone else has the attention because here's the thing, you know that you're good. You know that you might even be better than the person who's getting all the attention right now. You know that you may be more worthy of the spotlight than the person who has the spotlight right now. And even then, it doesn't bother you that somebody else has it because you know it's eventually going to find its way back to you. Why? Because you had the humility to do the work. So you know in the long run, when people look at it, when people look at everything from top to bottom, they're going to realize, oh, you're the person that everybody should have been paying attention to from the beginning. And because you didn't make a spectacle of yourself and didn't become an ass about drawing the attention back to you and trying to force it back on you, it eventually came back to you and people will admire you even more for the fact that you didn't make a big stink about it. This is how humility can actually help you. So accepting the fact that someone else can get that spotlight or get the attention, even when it's unearned by them, is a show of humility on your part. And a show of humility is a, a symptom, we'll call for lack of a better term, of a strong ego. People who have strong egos have humility. And even if they don't show it so much, they have enough of it that they exercise it in their actions. And a lot of times people don't even realize what humility looks like. If you take someone like Floyd Mayweather, popular undefeated boxer, who was known for his brashness and showing off his lifestyle and you know, just doing a lot of trash talking about other boxers and just about everything, but also a very successful, very successful performer in his profession. And people say, well, Floyd's arrogant and Floyd's cocky. Well, one thing that I say to people is, well, how did he become an undefeated fighter? The way he became an undefeated fighter is because he's always in the gym working on his game. He had the humility to understand that he had to keep working on his game so he could stay sharp enough so he could win fights. So one of the things that caused people to call him cocky and arrogant is that he's always bragging about winning. Well, one of the reasons he can brag about winning is because he does actually win. And the reason that he wins is because he does the work. So actually, he's actually one of the most humble people. And if you consider him arrogant, we can call him humble and arrogant at the same time. But you can't be that successful in a profession where people are getting paid and the best of the best are coming for you. You can't be that successful in any profession without being humble enough to do the work. That's just a, a truth of any profession. I don't care what it is. All that said, let's move on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is how to strengthen your ego. Number two, step up your discipline. It's another one that you might not have seen coming. How does stepping up your discipline strengthen your ego? 
Well, first of all, disciplined people are confident people. I told you in episode 17, I mean not 17, but 787, that discipline creates confidence. And let me make sure I'm giving you the right episode there. This is 7, 757, not 787, 757, how discipline creates confidence. Disciplined people are confident people. And why is that? Because they know they've done the work. What do I tell you every day when we open the show? The discipline to show up every day to do the work. If you show up every day and do the work, you have afforded yourself confidence. You buy confidence through discipline. Discipline is the legal tender. It is the means of exchange that you utilize to buy confidence. If you want to be a more confident person, get more discipline. Your confidence will go up. Disciplined people are confident people, and confident people are able to control their ego. The more, the stronger someone's confidence is, the less they need to put their ego on display, I guess is the best way of saying it. Ego, everyone, is not about taking everything personally. Ego is not about seeing a threat in every challenge. Now, usually socially, when we hear people talk about ego, at least in the Western world, when people talk about ego, you're talking about someone who may be a little bit self-centered, more self-centered than others, a person who feels like they always have to defend themselves, a person who takes offense at everything. That's not the only way to look at ego. Those are signs of, those are negative uses of ego. A positive use of ego is also understanding that because you've done the work, and because you have that true inner confidence, I'm not talking about the confidence that you post on the social media or you talk to the cameras and show off yourself for. I'm talking about the true inner confidence and understand, let me be clear, that this is a caveat to what I just said. Showing off your confidence and wearing it on your sleeve does not necessarily mean that you lack true inner confidence. Right? There are some people who do both. And there are some people who do one or the other. There are people who have true inner confidence, but they don't really put their confidence out for the world to see. They don't they'll make a show of it. And there are other people who do a whole lot of show of confidence, but they don't actually have any. And then there are people who make a show of their confidence and they have the true inner confidence. So understand there are three different categories there. So just because you see one or another in another person doesn't mean that they lack the others. You would have to do a little bit uh, more of an analysis of that person. But anyway, what I'm saying here is ego is not about taking everything personally. That's the weak, unhealthy ego that we have all seen in other people, maybe even shown ourselves. But a sense of true self-esteem, true inner confidence makes for an ego that is so secure and so disciplined that you don't have to take everything as a personal affront. All right, you can take a joke. You can take somebody uh, saying something funny at your expense. You can take the whole room laughing at you and make it into laughing with you. You can take the fact that, all right, you, you, got, a, you got a good one in there. You got to get one good one in on me right there and you can take it in stride. All right, you're the type of person that you can dish it out as well as you can take it. And you can take it as well as you can dish it out. Now, I've known a lot of people in my life who are really good at dishing it out when it comes to joking or telling somebody else what they're doing wrong or holding another person accountable. But when it comes to time for them to be joked about or being told what they're doing wrong or being held accountable, they're not as strong. That's a sign of a, an ego imbalance because they have enough ego to point it out in another person, but they don't have enough ego to take it. So whatever you're willing to dish out, you got to be willing to take. A sense of true self-esteem can do this in a very balanced way in which you are not thrown off your center by someone you know, directing their energy towards you, whether it's in a, a joking way, whether it's in a, a accountability type of way or whatever other way that somebody may direct their energy towards you. Just think about the way you direct energy towards other people. Do you, would you allow someone to bring that to you? Do you ask for it? Do you go seeking it out? Do you look for it? Do you shrink away from it when it happens to you? The same things you do to other people. This will give you a good measure of your ego, also a measure of your accountability gaps, which we talked about in episode, let me tell you what episode that was where we talked about filling up your accountability gaps, episode 765. So these are just a few days apart. This one creates confidence with 757. A week later, closing your accountability gaps in episode 765. Now, having that true inner confidence to where you can uh, take a joke, you can take a ribbon, you can take being held accountable, this does not mean that you don't have lines and principles that you won't allow other people to cross. It doesn't mean that you just allow people to say and do whatever they want towards you. But it does mean 
that you don't take everything as a challenge to your ego. You don't take everything personal. You don't take everything as a personal affront. People with weak egos take everything as a personal affront. You can't joke with them because they just take everything. Everything you say about them, they kind of, is, is always got to be a thing. It's just like Joe Pesci, I think, in the movie Casino. Everything, you couldn't joke about him, right? He's like, funny how? How am I funny? And he made a joke of it, but he was so serious when he first started that responding that everybody stopped laughing because he had a reputation for having a fragile ego. And he's the type of guy who would pop off at any time and just lose his temper. That anger became danger, like we talked about a couple of days ago. You don't be that type of person because people become so apprehensive around you that they eventually just avoid being around you and they never open themselves up to you. And you actually get cut off from a lot of things that you would know and a lot of things you could learn because nobody wants to open up to you because they're afraid of you uh, touching into that anger again because your ego is so weak. Point number three, today's topic once again, how to strengthen your ego. Third thing you can do is up your consciousness. And this is something that I talk about a lot in my book, The Mental Workbook. If you don't have that, you can get it at, just go to workonyourgame.com. You can see all of our books listed right there on the page. When I talk about upping your confidence, consciousness, not confidence, but consciousness, if you ever read any self-help books, and you should be reading self-help books if you listen to this show, because I'm mentioning them all the time. So any book that I mention on this show, by the way, you need to go get it. Read self-help books and learn about your mind. Learn about how your mind works. Learn about why you think the way that you've been thinking, because that will empower you to do something about it. Some books that you can start with, especially those of you who have not done any self-help reading outside of you know, whatever school requires of you, and I don't think it can require in the school is useful self-help. I don't know. Let me not say that. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, the Law of Success, also by Napoleon Hill. Uh, Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Uh, anything by Jim Rohn. I would say Work On Your Game by Dre Baldwin, The Mirror of Motivation, you can get by me. You can get that for free at mirrorofmotivation.com. But any self-help book, as a matter of fact, it doesn't have to be some uh, super popular author or even that super highly rated. If it was written with the concept of self-help, there'll be at least one nugget in there that you can use. When you read self-help books, what happens is you start to self-reflect. That's the whole purpose of the whole self-help genre is for you to self-reflect, to look at yourself and say, what am I doing? How am I thinking? What actions am I taking? What can I do differently? What can I fix myself? And that is the whole, the premise of the whole work on your game philosophy. As I say here all the time, we always bring it back to ourselves. That's what self-help is about. So if you don't have any books of self-help to read, here's where you can go to get started. Go to dreallday.com slash read, R-E-A-D, dreallday.com slash read, where I have my recommended reading list. And there are a bunch of books I need to add to that list and some links I need to update, but the list is there. So I don't have all the affiliate links up and all that, but the list of books is there. You can just look at the name of the book and you can go acquire the book by your own means. But when you read self-help books, again, it's always going to cause you to be self-reflective. That's the whole point of the, the genre. And when you start thinking about why you're thinking the way that you're thinking, because thoughts lead to words, words to actions, actions to habits, habits to character, that will empower you to change yourself. Because if you're not aware of what you're thinking, then you can't change how you're thinking. You cannot personally change something that you're not aware of. You can't alter anything that you're not paying attention to. So you need to start noting and paying attention to when you feel that your ego is being impugned upon, why you feel that way, and only then can you start taking note of this, only when, rather, you start taking note of this can you make alterations. This is what I mean by upping your consciousness. Taking the unconscious, 85% of our thoughts are unconscious thoughts, they are habitual thoughts, and make some of that, take that 85% unconscious number, take it down a little bit and replace it with consciousness. What if you became conscious of about 10% more of your thoughts on a day-to-day -day basis? What do you think would change in your life? You just took some of the thoughts that you have every day and you actually started noticing them and considering them and asking yourself, examining them and asking yourself, why am I thinking this way? Do you think you would change some of those thoughts? Do you think you might amplify some of them because they're actually helping you? Do you think you would get rid of some of them because they're actually hurting you? I think so. I think you would make some edits if you noticed what you were thinking rather than just let them be unconscious. This is what I think, but maybe I'm wrong, but you would have to find out, wouldn't you?
Let's recap today's class, which is how to strengthen your ego. Definition of ego is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. I talked about ego in many episodes here today. Again, scroll down in the uh, show notes and you'll see links to all the episodes in which I've talked about ego. Today, I'm going to tell you how to strengthen your ego in a way that will center and calm you, especially those of you who tend to pop off recklessly when you feel your ego is being impugned upon. Number one, accept that you can be wrong, you can lose, others may be better than you, get the spotlight and get more attention from you. Humility is the key aspect of a strong ego. Weak ego individuals can't deal with the fact that they are not being looked at as the king or queen of the world and the best at everything that they do. The strong ego individual can accept when someone else is getting the attention, at least temporarily, because they know it's going to come back to them because they've had the humility to do the work. And when you've done the work, the cream, as they say, always rises to the top. Point number two, step up your discipline. Disciplined people are confident people and confident people are able to control their ego because their confidence is coming from the inside. They have true inner confidence, not just the wear it on your sleeve, you no know, social media conference, but confidence, but real confidence. It doesn't mean that you don't have lines that should not be crossed, but it does mean you don't take everything as a challenge to your personal ego. Everything is not about you. All right. Most of the things that other people do have nothing to do with you. They are about themselves. Point number three, up your consciousness. When you read self-help books, you will learn about your mind. You'll be questioned about your mind. People will tell you things about your mind and how it works. And you'll start self-examining, key aspect, self-examining why you think the way that you think, which will empower you to do something about it. When you start thinking about why you're thinking, how you're thinking, then you can do something about it. You can't change what you are unaware of or what you refuse to notice. Start noting when you feel your ego is being impugned upon. Ask yourself, why do you feel that way? Is it really? Or are you just taking something personal that has nothing really to do with you? And give you a hint, 98% of the things that other people do have nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. You may just be involved, but it's not really about you. Only when you start taking note of why you're thinking, why you're thinking, you start asking yourself the question and getting the answers, only then can you actually make alterations to the way that you're thinking and thus start actually strengthening your ego. Now, again, send me a text. Tell me the most valuable insight or aspect you got from today's episode. My number, once again, is 305-384-6894. 305-384-6894. Work on your game. Dre, all day.